and Mike is right. I'm about to introduce the world's most successful TV actor. Star of House, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hugh Laurie! <laughs> It's just water. It's just you water. Want oh, did you not get a drink? I asked for vodka. Is that, that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's the one. Yes. Yeah. So here you are, musician. <laughs> I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm Irish. I find it difficult. Yes. <clears throat> um, not as difficult as I do. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because they let them talk, which I believe has the highest pre-sales on iTunes of any album ever. Wow. That's true. Isn't it? That sounds incredibly unlikely to me, but I'm not going to be the one to contradict you, because why would I do that? Exactly. It's not in my interest, I'm bigging it? it up. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And presumably, people have been a bit surprised that kind of British actor has done an authentic blues album recorded in New Orleans. Well, I don't know. You are one of those people. So I'm surprised. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, Anyone I, else I, surprised? I'm, I'm surprised. I'm a, I'm a little surprised. She's a little surprised. <laughs> well, no, yeah, good. <laughs> um, yes, possibly. I don't really know. The whole thing is such a dreamlike experience for me. I can't really tell. Um, I'm looking forward to reading about it in, about, in five years' time when I will, you know, it'll all sort of seem real. Well, because I mean, was you, you love music? Because in, even in Friday Night, you were always at the piano and everything. Yes, yes. But, I... uh, but is this kind of what you want to do now? It is what I've always wanted to do, actually, and... <laughs> <laughs> Absurd though it may seem. <laughs> um, it's, it's what I've always wanted to do, and, uh, of course, I've come to it by a, a, a rather odd route. Um, and, but I got this amazing opportunity to sort of reinvent myself, and I took it uh, I, with both hands. Uh, but you're gigging as well, you're gigging. Uh, we have done now three gigs, yes. Three of the most frightening experiences of my life. <laughs> but they, they went well, though, didn't they? They did go well. They yes. did go well. Uh, we've got one more uh, tomorrow night, Saturday, in Manchester, the Manchester Royal College. And then if you fancy a day out, uh, why not go to Paris on the 11th? Uh, right. <laughs> yes. Because, we because we what, I, what, I didn't, be what I didn't know is that the house in Europe is massive, isn't it? It is rather large. It is rather substantial. Yes. Um, I, I can't account for it I, because it seems to be such a wordy show. Uh, such a sort of densely wordy show that I can't imagine how it gets translated uh, well enough. Um, I mean, shows where people, you know, which involve guns and, you know, get in the car or get out of the car or, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's the dialogue. I can, I can understand that going well in, in Belgium, for example. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I picked on Belgium. They're little. Um, and there are no Belgians here. No, there aren't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it's something, it's something like House, which is such a... Um, an idiomatic and, and, and witty show, I think. I think it's in, in, extremely funny, extremely well-written. It, it's, it's amazing to me that people are prepared to, you know, they, they really sort of uh, get into it. Yeah. And are European fans more reserved than Americans, or are they...? We had a slightly frisky time in Germany. Uh, <laughs> the Germans were quite uh, assertive, how can I uh, let me put it that way? I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying they could form to any national stereotype at all. <laughs> I'm not saying, because they really were charming and friendly. But if things don't go their way, I had to get on a train uh, to leave Germany. And uh, there were a bunch of people with autographs, you know. And, and, and I said, look, I, I'm going to miss this train. If I stop doing, I'm going to miss the train. So they started tearing up the photographs and throwing them in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and saying, go back to England. <laughs> That, that's actually what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and then they, they would. Uh, what I didn't realize that the 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 uh, the German word. Well, it's not a word. The German for boo is not boo. <laughs> when when Germans boo, they go ooh. <laughs> so I had people after they'd done all that and they uh, they'd said all their German things. Um, <laughs> I was running for this train, and I, all I could hear was people going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes you wonder, what am I... Uh, am I uh, and, 
<laughs> it was only when I got on the train and I realised that that's what they'd uh, been trying to communicate. And in America, are the, are the, are the, is the American audience, because obviously we know, we know who you are. Oh, yes. We, we know. know everything there yeah. is to know. Yes. Uh, but in America, are they aware that you're a British actor? Uh, y yes, they are. They are. By now. I've been doing it a long time. It's seven years now. It is a long time. And yeah. I've said it over and over <laughs> again. Uh, so, yes, they, they, by and large, they are. Although the interesting assumption that America, that a lot of Americans will say, in a kind way, they will say, you managed to lose the accent. And I, it, which always strikes me, I have to sort of explain that I don't, I'm not losing an accent, I'm putting one on. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one with the accent. Yeah. <laughs> and, and course, but no country can think that way. Every country thinks that they were issued with a... God issued them with an accent. <laughs> and everyone else is just putting it on. Because, Robert, do you, do you kind of speak in American accent all the time, or do you...? <sighs> I mean, becoming more so. I mean, it's weird, especially in America, because people can't... Like, you literally have to you, translate yourself sometimes. In New York and things like that, if you're, if you're in a taxi and you try and say an address, you have to, you have to say it in an American accent. It's crazy. You do, if, you're you like, and if you order a water, if you say, can I have a glass of water, they're like, what? Is that what they say? Yeah. <laughs> but if you've been American, you must have had a, a stronger southern accent. Yeah, you... I, I, had a, I had a super country accent like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I think my mother still really thinks that you're an American. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. I think she actually thinks you're a real doctor, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really we're, about, we're about to hear some, uh, some music uh, from the album. What, what are you giving us? I'm going to do a song uh, with my uh, chaps over there. Who are kind uh, of New Orleans all stars, aren't they? These are, they are. These, these are these legends. Are, these, are, these are legends. And it's uh, my stupidity that I, I don't know. It sort of is. Yes, I feel so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a song called, uh, a lead belly song called You Don't Know My Mind. All right. Well, uh, if you want to go and get ready, I will, uh, yeah. you, very good. This week's stories in the red chair, but first, singing You Don't Know My Mind, it is Mr. You. Hi! <laughs> Walking down the levee with my head hanging low. Looking for my mama, but she ain't here no more. Baby, you don't know. You don't know my. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep from crying She won't cook my dinner, won't wash my clothes Won't do nothing but walk the road Baby, you don't know, you don't know my mind When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep from crying on the table and my coffee's getting cold mama's in the kitchen getting sweet papa told baby you don't know you don't know my mind when you see me laughing laughing just to keep on crying She should be buried alive, baby. You don't know, you don't know my mind. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep from crying. I wish I had a nickel, I wish I had a dime. I wish I hadn't given myself a bad woman's time, baby. You don't know.
your mama, see what you got and done. You took my money, now you're broke and wrong. Maybe you don't know, you don't know my mind. When you see me laughing, I'm laughing just to keep from crying. You made me get sound and you made me get mad. The going gets tougher than you ain't never had, baby. You don't know, you don't know my mind. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep on crying. When you see me laughing, laughing just to keep on. By the way, that album that that thought that May the 9th. I thought you'd like to know. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so May the 9th. Thank you. Yeah, you could pre-order it. I hear. <laughs> uh, now, uh, that's nearly it for tonight. But uh, before we go, just time for some stories in the red chair. You'll, this has become obvious as it goes along. Uh, who's up first? <gasps> Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. I just want to ride my bike with you. That's lovely. <laughs> and what's your name? It's Megan. Megan. All right. Where are you from, Megan? Brighton. Brighton. She's in Brighton. <laughs> Anyway, it went very well, Megan. Uh, okay, that's good the story. Well, my first job was working in a nursing home. I was cleaning one of the residents' rooms, thought I'd hoovered up a sock, and it turns out I'd hoovered up their budgie. <laughs> you can't get down now. Budgie's a little bird. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to know what you thought it was. <laughs> Where did your mind go in that moment? <laughs> old, old, old man and saw, I don't know. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> That's a much worse story. <laughs> uh, quickly, quickly. Hello, nice. <laughs> well, I thought they were here for you, Robert. <laughs> Apparently, it's this guy. Uh, who are you? Simon. This is Simon. Do you want to do it again? But it would be, yeah, they're thrilled to see you. Uh, so, where are you from, Simon? Uh, from East Putney. East Putney! <laughs> East Putney Massive! <laughs> OK, uh, uh, Simon, yes, off you go. OK, when I was 10, my parents took me to a small farmer's <laughs> sale. Anyway, we were going to a small farmer's sale, and we took the youth there, and so... <laughs> they, I can't understand a word you were saying! <laughs> Dad was looking for some animals and things to take home to our farm. And so anyway, him and Mum spotted this new dining room table. And I was just wandering around in my, in my jandals and, you know, just checking out the stuff. Mum and Dad spotted this table and chairs that they thought, that's going to be perfect in the dining room. <laughs> we put it on the back of the ute and we're going home. And us boys are sitting up, me and my two brothers, sitting up on the back of the ute in the chairs, in the dining room table chairs. <laughs> Dad thinks it's a big good idea. Oh, I know what we'll do. You boys want some ice cream out the back, you know. And so we're like, yeah, absolutely, we'll have ice cream. Next thing you know, we're all sitting there, licking our ice creams, sitting on the back. Dad decides, seeing a bit of Formula One, he'd like to take the corner probably a bit quicker than he should have. Me on my chair, shh, bang, fall down on the road. Like that. <laughs> That's it! We're done! Uh, well done, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'll have a go in that red chair. You can. Find out via our website at this address. Thank you so much, all my guests tonight. Hugh Laurie! <laughs> Winning actor Jeffrey Rush, comedian Jason Byrne, and global singing superstar Lady Gaga. Don't want to miss that. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye.